Okay. Well, um, thank you, first of all, to Gabriela Monterroso for inviting me to today this beautiful show. And it's been, you know, a wonderful experience. And thank you, Joyce, for allowing me to be, you know, in this conversation. Okay. Uh, I love your work, and we, we, we have had, um, you know, wonderful exchanges. So, well, the first thing I would like to start is to, to, to mention or to talk about, um, you know, about your creative process in relation to this exhibition, and in particular, uh, how do you, because of, of course the name of the exhibition is Chasing Connections, and we will go deeper into what, what we mean by that, but um, the first thing that comes to mind when we kind of look around uh, is uh, the connection to, with or to nature. So I would like to kind of start exploring how do you connect with nature, and how, so, and how does that affect or impact the creative process? Okay, well thank you. Um, yeah, I guess the, the work that's here, you know, photography might be an art form, is, is going to be a combination of the technical skills exactly. and then the creative side. And I think um, being out with the birds, spending so much time with them has, has enhanced my technical skills a great deal because birds are small and pretty and flighty and take off and they can never steal behind the so like you said, yeah, yeah. To talk, to yeah. talk to each other, to want to talk to each other, or to kind of say things, and and then we, we when we met, we talked about it, and and then you mentioned how you find uh, parallels between uh, bird behavior and also human human behavior. So that's something that I, I would like you to expand more because that's exactly what I got. So if that's what you're trying to capture, I think you at least with me you were successful because I was able to to get it and to see, you know, kind of, they're, they're, they're wanting to connect and we have, at the end, we can then move to, to see that, but like, can we, how do you, because that requires hours and hours, I guess, of, of yes. you know, observation, <laughs> patience, but so in all that process, how do you find humans and birds to be similar? If, and maybe I just spend too much time with birds <laughs> and it becomes part of it, but, uh, you know, and something is, if, you know, really obvious in this one yeah. is where you have the little house sparrows with the daddy and the baby. Mm -hmm. And in most of the bird species, or many of them, uh, once the baby's fledged and they're ready to be fed on the branch like this, it's the daddy that takes over because the mom is trying to fatten up and have another nest again. So, you know, in watching that and thinking about, well, how do we as humans, how do we raise our kids? How do you know, how do the, the two parents or the single parents manage? And seeing those relationships and thinking about, well, maybe we can learn things yeah. from the birds too, um, but seeing their challenges, you know? Raising kids isn't easy for us or for anybody, us. yeah. Um, and, and really just um, seeing the, their, their interactions, both with other birds and within their own species, and then the, the things that they have to do, their 
it reminds me of a human situation. I mean, like uh, this girl right here, uh, it's a female summer tanager with a beard in her mouth. The, the backstory on that is that she had just landed on the coast because she's migrating from the south to the north. They have to fly hundreds, some of them fly thousands of miles in a day. Sometimes they're flying over water. And these little these little birds are starving when they get there. And, it, and they're getting thrown into a place that they don't know yeah. because they're just arriving. So um, yeah, and, that and kind of need to adapt yeah. and, and to explore new. And, and it makes me think about, you know, they're, they're, they're traveling for different reasons, mm -hmm. but it makes me think about, you know, people who are in such desperate situation, they're willing to take those kind of long and incredibly hard journey because where they're living is too yeah. dangerous or too impoverished. And they're seeking refuge yeah. somewhere else. And they have that same exhaustion and tiredness. And I think about that when I see the birds coming over. So that would yeah. be a couple of that, that, no, definitely. And then another example, and maybe we can move uh, so we can focus on, on, on the birds that, we, that are connecting more, you know, noticeably. <laughs> Um, I remember you talking about like the mating dance in a way, uh, how you observe that there is kind of uh, in some birds um, a ritual, let's do it that way, the, the one with the, with the, you know, with the stick. And then, okay, okay, that yeah, is, the, there is very, you know, no, okay, so maybe we can then yeah. talk about it because I was very, I was fascinated by this, <laughs> that story because I thought, yeah, that's, Similar also to the way we, well, yeah. another way of no, literally, but metaphorically, we yes. parallel because the great blue herons, which are usually very solitary birds, they um, don't tend to stay together to see one lone beautiful one out there. But in mating season, they all come together and there's lots of ritual with the great blue herons. And this is a really important part of it where the male has to present a suitable stick mm -hmm. for nest building. And if she's not happy with that stick, all his work. <laughs> <laughs> um, so usually by this point, the stick mm -hmm. is the deal. Mm -hmm. So it's like being the engagement ring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so maybe it's a little that's when she convinces her, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got a nice kiss going on here. It's all good. Exactly. So that's an acceptance of the zoo. Yeah, and I also um, I want to kind of point out because first we have another artist in the exhibition, uh, Jonathan Jackson, and I when when we see his work and we can focus a little bit more on his work, I also and then talked to him and I went to a studio visit with uh, him. He also explained, and this is of course very, very obvious, how nature is a super important role. It plays a super important role in this world. And I remember him saying that um, he loves to explore, of course, the way he himself connects with nature, but also uh, the way how different artists or different people react to the same scene, like the multiple interpretations of the same scene. And this is, I think, a wonderful example of that because this may be, the, the, you know, the, the, his depiction of the same place that you are right. then photographing these birds. It's just his own way of, of you know, then artistically present the same landscape. So I, I think that's lovely because uh, he also mentions how he, he has deep connection with nature, he goes, you know, nature walks, he has a beautiful uh, backyard where he spends a lot of time. So it, it, it's a very interesting way for me in particular to see how, you know, different uh, different artists' representation of them have similar way. Yes. So also um, maybe we can kind of move on to this side. I love this, well, this is one of my favorite images I think of a lot of people. I like here to point out an, another part of the conversation we had with the men that you are concerned with uh, more like philosophical and more um, environmental uh, issues of, and that's 
one of the reasons you chose to, to photograph birds, but also in the bigger scheme you see, you know, you, you kind of, it makes you think about the, the impact of modern life uh, in our environment and how, for example, the growth of a city means probably the disappearance of some species. So can you just talk more about it? Absolutely. Um, in what well, we look around and we think, oh, there's more birds out there. In reality, there are three million fewer birds today than there were in 1970. So really, is that short time? one in four of our birds has vanished. And um, most of that is related to, as you said, just the changes that we have brought about. So climate change, loss of habitat, sometimes over hunting, but I think the loss of habitat yeah. is the most critical, which is often caused by climate change, yeah. as well as other things. If you look around Houston, it's so easy to see. I mean, yeah. the most obvious is the roads that used to be rice fields, the highways, the sides along Interstate 10, now they're big industrial warehouses, yeah. or they're housing, and so the places that we have mm -hmm. for our birds to fly are just vanishing. These are the whooping cranes, and it's probably, of all the photos of the exhibit, the most obvious and telling about that, because in the 19, early 1940s, there were less than 30, I think there were about 23 whooping cranes left in existence for the entire planet. Wow. So we now are up to a little over 800 of the breeding population, and we're really fortunate because these guys do have their wintering grounds in Texas and in an individual place. But so you think that, well, gosh, they come back from 23 to 800 and something, but they're not out of the woods. They're still struggling. They're yeah. still losing them from things like they dam up a, a river that feeds into the bay and the estuaries. It changes the ecosystem yeah. there. And pretty soon there aren't any blue crabs. And then these, these are the tallest birds in North America, yeah. so they're, they're really amazing. And it makes you also think about the choice of, of growth, because you can, I think there are other ways to, 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 you know, to grow a seed to yeah. that there are seed that can grow, respecting a little bit more environment. Of course, there is going to be an impact, but, but the yes, way it, it has been done is just yeah. not considering at all the impact it has, not only in birds, but in many, many other and, and I think that some places are doing better at yeah. that. And I think that you know, as awareness increases, and if my work can raise some of that awareness, you know, every little, every little bit helps. Yeah. Um, more and more of our cities are becoming bird friendly in the sense of turning the lights on off in the skyscrapers during the migrating season. You know, we lose hundreds of thousands of birds due to bird strikes by like the skyscrapers. So every little bit that somebody knows helps. So, yeah. And I would like to also mention, because of course we have the other pieces by, by Jonathan, you know, together in conversation with the world. This is what he calls uh, color limitations. But he mentioned, and I think it's a beautiful, you know, relation to your work, that some of these color limitations, and we have more here, are um, like the way he sees um, a flying bird. Yes. Like the, 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 you know, what, what a, a flying bird looks in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a rapid motion. And I love that because it's, um, it's kind of a way to reflect also on, on that, on that connection to nature and on that, um, of observing carefully and more capturing a moment. But again, the different ways that two artists do that. I mean, you capture a moment with a very precise, super, super, you know, detail, he captures a moment in a more like, yes. you know, just free feeling, the feeling, exactly. And, and then I think we can move on to, to another of my questions that is our, you know, what we <laughs> thought about when, when, when we talk and also me looking at your work is um, about relationships, right? Because we are talking here about connections, but not only connections to nature, we connect with other people, we need that connection as humans, but also I think um, we also need 
and, and I think, of course, this past year has been um, a very, you know, strong lesson on that. Uh, we need to connect with ourselves. And that is something that I would like you to, to kind of talk about in, in relationship to the work that you are, uh, that we have here, but also in general. Um, well, as you said, I think the pandemic has caused a lot of people to think more about that. It's also given a lot of us more the time to do that. But, um, you know, it's, it's well proven that spending time in nature improves well-being yes. in, in many ways. And, um, these days, there are studies that say that people spend 90% of their lives indoors. And so one of the things that I feel like with some of my work is as it's been, as I share it, um, other people are inspired maybe to go out and to observe and to appreciate and take the time. And often people will ask me, well, how do you, how do you get those birds in your backyard? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I would say, you know, they're there. You just have to slow down and take Slowing the time. Slowing down, I think, is, is, um, is very important to yeah. also to be able to, to then tune into yourself because we live in a, in a very kind of speed, motion, life that, you know, going from one place to another. I mean, and that distracts us, right, from... from also to, from connecting to other people. From, sometimes you don't, we don't have the time to call a friend or to you know, call a, a family member, but also you don't have the time to think about yeah. your own needs. And, and I think sometimes it takes just a little bit, but being out in nature and being birds yeah. or, or whatever else people do yeah. really makes a difference in that. And, and I feel like you know, it is, my photography has allowed me to connect with a lot of people, um, you know, in a very positive way. I sense a very positive connection. Yeah. Um, funny story, maybe I shouldn't tell, but um, <laughs> uh, um, Gabriella will appreciate this. I think that if you're familiar with the next door app and how things can get a little yeah. dicey <laughs> on it, and I did start. Uh, you know, a few years ago when it started seeming kind of dicey and be like, I think I need to post a picture of a beautiful, peaceful bird. And uh, that's really uh, Just um, also yeah, to bring some positive input yeah. into the conversation. <laughs> and then I developed these really wonderful, positive connections with other people. And so that has been fabulous. And and as far as the self-peace yeah. and connecting us, Absolutely. I think that being in nature just really helps us to be more self-aware and in turn we all have more empathy, we all develop better social skills. Definitely. And also I, I guess it's also a very, very, very good practice of patience, which is <laughs> yeah, because you have to be really willing to wait. But that also is a practice that you then can apply to other aspects of your, yes. your life and also to your art. I mean, just to be patient with yourself and don't get desperate if you don't get the right shot at the first time. You just, okay, try again. And it's, it's just a, it's, it's a practice. It's, it's, the birds do what they want to do. Oh, definitely. They're yeah. really terrible <laughs> in the following direction. I'm sure they are. <laughs> but let's just move on and to finish. I, well, we can job and then finish here. But okay. um, so this one right here, I love how you also capture an instant. I mean, that, that that is uh, beautiful because it's just that is. I, I I don't know how many times you tried or if it was random or how did it happen. But I love these two pictures together. I love them in relation to also to Jonathan's uh, work. As there are kind of uh, that to me feels like. Water yes. in the sand. Yes. So, um, uh, well, tell us about the story behind these two. Um, well, the right was Aaron and Tom. I think I mentioned in the courtship one that typically they're very solitary. Okay, so, great. most of the time, you're only going to see one, or if there are more than one, they're not close together. But they're such beautiful, magnificent, uh, and in this case, colorful, because this was during the uh, breeding season. Um, so this, this guy was just flying across this marshland and, I don't know, to me, 
it was so peaceful, but he just looked like he owned it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is this nice. Is my <laughs> like a gathering, like a party, <laughs> uh, which we are all <laughs> finally starting to, to, to be back to that. But it's, it's beautiful to see, again, another parallel with, with human behavior, like they, they seem to be enjoying, you know, being yes. together, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's, that's just beautiful. And they're quite pelicans, and they're actually cooperative hunters too, so they fish together, okay. whereas the brown pelicans are, are they, they're on their own. Okay. But these will come together in a group and literally herd the fish, so they all benefit. Yeah, so it's like a community. They're working together. Yeah. And this is, I guess, after they had quit their fishing, because they're all kind of ringing, they're chatting and having happy hour now. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris, what drew me to this one was it was you know, sunset time, and the sky and the water were the same color yeah. and I, I, I would just throw in I never photoshop nature work I mean I, I, by that I don't mean that you, know, you don't have to do a little lighting adjustment but what people call photoshop I would never change the color right. I would never take out a background and yeah. put something fake in so, so this is what it was and this is one of those moments that I talked about I on this one it it wasn't a long time that I was there. It was just enough time to to capture this, but yeah, that that 10 or 15 minutes was probably worth two or three hours of therapy. Yeah. That I <laughs> 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 that, right? to, be, to be in presence of such, you know, wonderful meeting. And then what happened afterwards? Like they just flew or they stayed or what? what? They were still there when I said yes. Yeah. <laughs> so they were, yeah, definitely having, yes. having a fun time. Um, but well, I think this concludes our, our talk. I don't know if you have something else you would like to add or. or well, I would just like to thank you. No, no, no. Because as a curator, you did such a magnificent job of um, helping with selection and, and making everything work so beautifully together with John. Jonathan's wonderful paintings. Um, it's been a delight, and also thanking Gabriella for um, getting me into this. And, and I don't know if you, we have questions from the audience or from the virtual audience. I don't know if I mean, someone would like to. Hi, I love the description of this picture. It was just kind of talk about what she saw in that picture the three different birds? Sure. Um, well, in fact, I think two or three people today have even said, oh, I thought that was three of the same kind of birds. And it's not. It's, if you're interested, it's a ruddy turnstone, a sanderling, and a semi-pollinated plover. So three different little shorebirds. Um, but you frequently see them together. The little sanderlings are almost always mixed in with a lot of other gulls and terns and shorebirds. But I love this one because they seem to be, I mean, kind of marching together because they really seem to have the same purpose in mind and they were cooperative in doing this, although it does to me look like a little sanderling is, 
large and in charge, and he's actually <laughs> tiny. Um, he's also a micro bird, all micro birds. That little sanderling breeds in the high Arctic. These little sanderlings travel 6,000 miles in migration. Mm -hmm. uh, so really incredible, but I love their, their connection and, and his spontaneous in this mm -hmm. one. Awesome. All your knowledge of the birds, how did you acquire all of that? Um, research. <laughs> We have people, but nobody's asking anything. Nobody's asking. Okay, that's fine. I'll just not you know, for anybody. Anyways, no more comments or questions. Lovely interview. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It was amazing. Thank you.